So we can pick up where we um, left off in the last video, where I wrote down for um, the uh, raising operator, a dagger, this um, table or matrix showing um, which elements, uh, what were the coefficients for going from a uh, state of say um, n into a state of n prime. So what I'd like to do now is to do the same thing for the lowering operator. So if I have the lowering operator and then I have my state n which can go 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot into a state n prime 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. Then again, I can make this table where this table, um, I, I'm not going to be able to lower a 0 into a 0, so that is a coefficient of 0. I can lower a, a coefficient, the state of 1 into a state of 0, so that's the square root of n, or 1, and I can't directly lower um, the 2 into 0 or the 3 into 0 right here. Um, now, I also can't lower a 0 into a 1. That would be a raising operation. So that would be 0. Basically, this entire column would be 0 because I can't go from a lower state into a higher state with a lowering operator. Um, I can't go from a 1 to a 1 or a 1 to a 2, so forth. I can go from the state 2 into the state 1, which would give me the square root of 2, and then I can fill in the zeros. And I can go from the state 3 into a state 2, which would be the square root of 3, and all the other elements would be zeros. <clears throat> okay, so now I basically have this map, which shows what coefficients you're going to get if you operate um, either a raising operation or a lowering operation. Now the interesting thing is that I can rearrange things um, somewhat because I said that the lowering operator was this alpha times the um, <coughs> uh, position operator plus I beta times the momentum operator and the raising operator is a dagger is alpha x minus i beta times the momentum, where alpha is, um, if I remember correctly, uh, the square root of m omega over 2 h bar, and beta was 1 over the square root of 2 um, m omega h bar. <clears throat> um, okay, so the interesting thing is now I could take these two equations and let's say if I add a plus a dagger, then what I get is um, 2 times alpha the position operator. <clears throat> so I can now divide by 2 alpha and so I get I can write the position operator as 1 over 2 alpha times the lowering plus the raising operator. And if I put in alpha, I get 1 over 2 times alpha, so that's the square root of the mass times the frequency 2 h bar, a plus a dagger. And then if I clean this up, I get uh, basically um, uh, h bar over 2m omega to the square root of the sum of the operators. Now I can do the same thing for the momentum. If I was to take these two equations right here and subtract a minus a dagger, so a minus a dagger is going to give me um, 2i beta times the momentum operator. And so the momentum operator is 1 over 2i beta times the difference in the raising and the lowering um, operators. And now if I put in the beta, I get 1 over 2i, 1 over the square root, 
m omega h bar a minus a dagger <clears throat> and what you get is uh, um, i uh, um, Okay, yeah, uh, minus i, sorry, minus i, um, m omega h bar over 2 square root a minus a dagger. So if I bring that minus sign into the parentheses, then I would get i m omega h bar over 2 to the 1 half power a dagger minus a. So now this is great. We've rewritten our um, <clears throat> position and momentum operators in terms of the raising and lowering operators. And since we know um, the uh, how to uh, operate with the a and the a dagger on the energy state, we can now operate with momentum and position on um, the energy state. Now what we can do is we can write down the same table or matrix for the position operator. So in this case, um, we're again looking at the transition from the n state to the n prime. So we can start n being 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. And n prime will go to 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. And so we can make this table where now the table is the addition of the tables for the raising operator and the lowering operator. So that means if we add them up, we get 0, square root of 1, 0, 0, square root of 1, 0, square root of um, 2, 0, 0, square root of 2, 0, uh, the square root of 3, 0, 0, square root of 3, 0, dot, 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 on all those rows and columns. What we now have, oh, and then multiply that by this coefficient. h bar over 2m omega square root. <clears throat> we can do the same thing for the momentum. We could write out a table for the momentum which go we made transition from n to n prime going from 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 and now we're subtracting them um, so we subtract a dagger minus a and so we get 0 minus the square root of 1 0 0 the square root of 1 0 minus the square root of 2 0 0, square root of 2, 0, minus the square root of 3, 0, 0, the square root of 3, 0, so forth and so on. Um, where we now have to multiply the whole table by i m omega h bar over 2, the square root. So you have to multiply each of those coefficients um, by that uh, that term out front. <clears throat> um, and then lastly, if we want to look at the Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian operator we said was um, a, uh, um, oh, I'm sorry, we said was n plus one half. So if we write out that table, going from 1, going from n, 0, 1, 2, 3, to n prime, 0, 1, 2, 3. <clears throat> so in this case, um, we can't really make a transition with the Hamiltonian from n to n prime. You always have n prime and n have to be the same. So in this case, you would have 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves. 7 halves, dot, 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 with zeros in the off diagonal elements, like so. And then multiply this whole table by h bar omega. So basically we can, we can write out in a table, in an array form, 
all of the different possibilities of finding the inner product of um, the state n to n prime. <clears throat> um, and so what I wanted to end this video with was the fact that given a ground state, which I'm going to call in this case the ket zero, <clears throat> um, you can create any state n by raising and lowering. So I could start with n being the rate of the um, raising of the state n minus 1, and now I have to divide by that coefficient, square root of n, and then I can take the n minus 1, and that's going to be the raising operator over the, co the term, the square root of n minus 1, n minus 2, so I've basically raised n minus 2 up to state n minus 1, <clears throat> and then you can keep going and going and going until eventually you get to um, you get to uh, n number of these operations. So the raising operator to the nth power operating on the ground state divided now by the square root of n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, dot, 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 all the way down to 1, which is basically n factorial. So that you can create a state n from operating n times with the raising operator on the ground state divided by the square root of n factorial. <clears throat> um, similarly, if you started with the high energy state, you could work your way all the way down to the ground state by an n number of operations of the lowering operator um, back down to find the ground. So if you're given a, a state, you can always find the ground state. Or if you're given the ground state, you can always find your way up to another state. And so this is, this is just really powerful in the fact that you can now jump transitions between one energy state to the next energy state very easily with these raising and lowering operators.